and I don't think it's uh, bad or intentional. I think we all just throw ourselves into the deep end. And you're like, look, I'm doing it. And I'm like, drowning? I'm like, uh, you're like, but I'm swimming. And I'm like, it looks like you're drowning, you know? <laughs> Welcome back. Best hour of their day. Brittany Kincaid. You may recognize her from the cat videos. If you follow cat programming, which you should consider if you're not, this is the lovely face you get to see, what, every day? Um, every, At least once a month. I'm on like a week cycle. Yeah, well, you, they should put you, I'm going to throw it out, James, if you're listening, more Brittany, less Todd. Do we all agree on that? Uh, yeah, I don't think that's a dispute. Yeah. And also owner of this fantastic affiliate, CrossFit Mafia. Which yeah. we have been here before. Check out the dropping in that we did here. Insert link now, Nate. That was a lifetime PR for a double, for sure. We had so much because she's also five-year veteran on seminar staff. You got all the things. All the things. Which is most exciting to you, CAP, Mafia, or seminar staff? Before you answer, let me answer for you. It's Mafia. <laughs> Don't answer anything else in case your members are listening. But um, which would you like to chat about? Oh, I, we can chat about all that stuff. It doesn't matter to me. It's up to you guys. What would you um, like to chat about then, Fern? What's the overlap on the three of those? Do you feel that working so, on one makes you better at the other? It's a Venn diagram, if it you is will. A Venn Imagine diagram. there's three <laughs> circles, <laughs> yep. and in those three circles, we could put, I don't know, anything that we wanted. Yeah. Coaching, affiliate ownership. <laughs> There's an overlap. Yeah, yeah, right video. here. Yeah. Go ahead. You answer um, the question. How do they overlap and what is, do they impact each other? I th for sure, seminar staff impacts uh, my ability to do a, jo a good job here as a coach, as an affiliate owner. Because you work so hard, you can't do a good job here is what you're saying? Yeah, there could be some of that sometimes. <laughs> this would be much easier if you this, let her answer the question. Yeah. <laughs> you guys know. I mean, when you are when you work hard for, for a weekend, a seminar weekend to Mondays deliver, are tough. Yeah, Mondays are tough. And so that's taken – It's that takes its toll for sure, like, on my schedule, not – I have to be good and give myself some grace and some time to come off of a seminar weekend before I'm ready to come back in here and like give it my all. And you guys know that you've done that before. Um, cause you do need a little like downtime to get your life together. Some of us need more downtime yeah. than others. I feel Wait. super jealous. I was just back in the gym on Monday. Like early, I did early that on, yeah. for like two and a half it's years. It's unsustainable, yeah. Yeah. but you were actually saying more of a positive light like being on seminar staff has developed you into a fantastic coach. I th well, being on seminar staff develops your eye and um, and your public speaking and your empathy towards others, and you get to experience other gyms and other athletes and all kinds of fun stuff. So it just it just broadens the spectrum or the scope at which you do your job. I like that. W what do you think? Because as you were saying that, I do think those three things are key. It develops your eye, gives you empathy, and also public speaking. Yeah. I think. For me, it's been public speaking. If you, I think if I went back now and watched myself speak 15 years ago, I'd be like, that guy's dumb. Mm -hmm. Do you? I don't know that we have to go back 15 years for that. But <laughs> 15 agree. minutes, yeah, I meant to say. Yeah. If, but we go back to, if we go back three minutes and 23 <laughs> seconds, I think we would. Which one do you think it's helped you the most? Probably empathy. I was As I was saying it, I was like, don't say empathy because that's wrong. Well, just not towards you. <laughs> the, no, but I, I, think, uh, I think some people naturally have... have uh, better or more empathy than others. Yeah, they're but, called women. But I think, I do think it is a developed skill. I think if you, the higher the volume of interactions you have with other human beings, the better you get typically at interacting with you, reading people's facial expressions, body language, like just generally um, what what's going on in their headspace when you're having those interactions. I think that is really honed over time when you go from like, okay, I've got the folks in my field that I interact with those, but then you take that and you multiply it 10x yeah. with stranger after stranger after stranger and all of a sudden you become very attuned to you know your own both your own kind of verbal and nonverbal communication as well as other people's verbal and nonverbal communication you, for instance giving a lecture you can quickly pick up like who's kind of bored yeah. who's really engaged or if you're giving feedback this person is definitely not enjoying the feedback i'm giving them in a level two or level one setting and then more importantly, being able to shift that yeah. very yeah. quickly instead of staying rigid on my plan. I'm like, okay, I'm going to I'm gonna change the strategy immediately in order to get to the end state. Yeah. Uh, I think that's probably the, the biggest, the biggest I, I think that was, yeah, I, th I like it. It's like the empathy allows you 
to better interact with them because you could be more of a chameleon and know what you need to do to give them what they need. Because like you said, we've all interacted with thousands of and people. And it also happens on a bigger scale because you, like Colorado, Denver area, metro area, and the people that I see on a regular basis, this demographic is, it's demographic and things change when you go to the Midwest or the South or to Canada or Costa Rica. And then you get to like all of those things that you just talked about, all of that changes based off of culture and experience and um, just that. It just, it makes you just work harder and be better at public speaking at empathy at all at, at connecting with people so on, a, on a basis because of everybody's different we're really Not lucky that yeah. we have a job we love that does develop us for the real world too i think yeah. these skills are applicable outside of the box as well 100 percent. you got to work in costa rica i did with derek um derek was the translator and Carl, this is a while ago then, yep, huh? it was like my first year on staff on easter weekend um derek was the translator and carlos was the flow and because everybody that was there was spanish speaking we actually did the whole deal in spanish do you speak spanish no i just so it was translated it was from tr- english only it my lectures no bueno. <laughs> <It was> only <laughs> <no>. <laughs> i learned a lot of spanish that weekend um but the, every carlos did i was brand new on it's, staff uh, so i it's literally muy espanol m- yeah Yes, I love listening to the translations because like blah 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 burpees blah 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 like you know, like yeah. yeah all the words Air are the squat. same like the movements yeah. don't actually change yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, like but I it, picked yeah. up that yeah he just decided Carlos did the whole thing in Spanish except for my lectures which was like two because I was brand new on staff and then I Derek was my translating buddy in breakout groups and stuff that's yeah. awesome is that cool. the coolest place you've been to on staff. Mm, it's definitely in the top five I really enjoyed all of Canada that I've been to it's really fun. Is, uh, what's the furthest you've been? Puerto Rico? Um, I don't know. What's further away? Edmonton, Alberta, or Costa Rica relative to they're probably, Colorado? They're probably similar in... Yeah, they're probably about the same. Edmonton distances. is yeah. way up there where it's yeah. 40 yeah. degrees below zero. Did you work zero. with Doobie? Mm, that one was with Jason McDonald. Oh, Jason's awesome, too. Yeah, because yeah, Colorado's like in... The, actually, I bet Puerto Rico... Well, uh, they're probably... They're both far. Yeah. Yeah. Where's furthest you've been? I'm not good with geography, but I've been to Dubai... That's, That's pretty, pretty far. Close. Like yeah, it was. <laughs> that was Thanksgiving weekend. I was like, Roz, Ooh. I'm going to Dubai. Um, have a great holiday with my parents. I'm about <laughs> no. the same. Kuwait's the furthest I've been. For CrossFit or for? Oh wow, oh, you cool. did a seminar. Yeah, did Dubai is awesome, by the way. It's unique. Yeah, unique's probably better. We're super clean. I was with Westerlin, and we're like, we get there, super sleep deprived, and we fell asleep. On like their subway system, but it was super clean. That happened to me. We f- I flew in like a Thursday, I think. It was myself, Ginny, and Nolan Mooney, and I was so tired giving the press's lecture. Oh yeah, I literally just went <laughs> blank. And at one Your point, brain shuts I went off over. I just looked over. I think I believe Nolan was the was the demo, and I looked over at Ginny. I was like, I forgot what I was gonna say. <laughs> Where are we? Where I are was we? like, what What am I supposed to say next? And she was like, oh. she so I gave me the thing. I was like, thank you. I literally just blacked out well that's uh, people don't understand like seminar staff is amazing for all the things we've talked about but people don't realize like oh you went to dubai them as like for two days like the havoc that wreaks on your body as long as i was there yeah like it was like literally 24 hours of travel each direction thanksgiving weekend and you're just there and like western and i did go to the burj khalifa with like the tallest building because when you travel international oftentimes you go a day early yeah but uh, typically it's like you go to canada you're not like sightseeing no you're like hotel gym hotel home yeah maybe a restaurant maybe yeah maybe i don't know the canadian crew really likes to like show you around so it's yeah. Do they? oh yeah they do they're, they're like that's a, why they're I like like a watered going up down there. version of the euro crew they're so yeah. fun i can see that every time we went i was always like we gotta show this let's gonna take you here it's fun do you guys just randomly put in different requests in the hrd no i, I try to i mean i put one in recently for dublin I was like, hey, I'm just shooting my shot. And they were like, Dunkirk, Maryland. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Courtney's like, no. Nice we, we did ask for Puerto Rico because we've gotten asked to go there. But I'm, usually I'm like, keep me as local as possible. I would always just put random ones no, in I do there. Sh- no, like, I, do, I do send it sometimes. What you, what'd you, asked, what do you try for? Oh, I always ask for Hawaii because my, my daughter's there. I ask for Iceland because we want to go desperately. 
Um, and, and it's worth noting, you put it in the notes, like yeah. you have a daughter or yeah. you have family yeah. there. They may try to make Pensacola, it happen. Florida, my husband's family is there. So I like I request places where there's a legitimate reason for me to want to go there. Yeah, family there's no legitimate reason for me to go to Ireland other than, <laughs> other than drink. Fond drink of it. Yeah. He wrote in the notes, I want to get wasted. <laughs> yeah. Alec like, Joe was like, <laughs> I like Guinness. <laughs> Valid. Yeah. Valid. So how long has Mafia been around? Uh, November will be our ninth year. Nine yes. years here. Yeah. And, and what was that journey for you to open Mafia? Oh gosh, that's a long story. I know you were a trainer at Lifetime. I was. Pri- I was. I started being doing personal training and athletic training when I was eighteen. So it started really early. That's really early. Mm-hmm. I did all I the like when I was 16, certificates so. that you need You're to get. You know what I mean? Yeah, did you get ACE, AFA? I, oh, I had the ACE. I had the NASM. I had the C- NSCA. The that's CSCS. a good one. That was a good one back all. in the day. Had them all. I mean, probably still is yep. decent. It was required for my undergrad to do my CSCS. Um, so I started training as a personal trainer young when I was 18 and then moved Can we to talk about the CSCS real quick? Spill it. This is... Uh, it's not spell a point it? He can't spell, spell it. it. <laughs> spill it. He can't spell it. Spill it. It's, it's, like, it's like better and butter. Butter. Yeah. The, um... <laughs> you guys will get that later. Nate. Butt butter. <laughs> the, uh... <laughs> Calm down, better. <laughs> This, this is all, I, I've, I've always found this to be confusing, which is a lot of people, the level one gets a lot of heat. Like it's a weekend seminar, whatever. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, there's no seminar for a CS. You just have to have a degree. You and then you can register take and take a test. Mm-hmm. And you get those letters. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Same with, a, I mean, ACE. There, so there is quite literally no pre-training requirement to carry that credential. And there's no practical for any of those no. outside of CrossFit. There's no hands-on trainer practical practical development or training or test that's involved for anything. And it's for all the, just read a book and take a test. And for the mm-hmm. record, the reason I'm bringing that up is not to poo-poo on those programs. It's, it's to poo-poo on the people poo-pooing it's on just CrossFit. The, yeah, well, the criticism is not legitimate. They're like, oh, it's just a weekend seminar. I'm like, well, there's no weekend anything. Yeah. Like, you could you could quite literally be, what was your undergrad in? Something like exercise, exercise phys, yeah, or, yeah, so or exercise science. You could be an econ major and carry that credential and have done nothing. You have to show nothing. All you have to do is register to take the test, boom, and then you get it. You're saying you don't even have to have a degree in exercise to Zero. take that? Zero. You, have to, have, a, you yeah. have to have a degree. So as a psychology major, yep. I could have taken it? Yep. Oh, maybe I'll take degree. it. I legitimately do. They have so, an L four version. So I'll, I, I know this because I, I legitimately, on a whim, just registered for it. I was just like, I just want to see what the test is about. And so it's and it's very, uh, it's kind of like the level three, but there's two parts. I forget what their name, but one is like the exercise science, and the other one's practical or something yeah. like that. I forget what I I passed one portion, didn't pass the other portion. But I was like, okay, well, now I understand what this is about. Yeah, you, know? you went in cold though. I did not open a book. I had no idea what I was walking into. Yeah. Zero. And the, that second part is all like their science. Period, no, their periodization program, which is doesn't. So is the, like, and that was the reason. There, yeah. it's very and, uh, and this and it's not to poo poo on the on the test, right? The test yeah. is it's pretty hard, but it's it's ob- anybody who's taking a test ever, they want their mm-hmm. answers. Content, they yeah. want their content, yeah. just like I'd be no different than the level three. Yeah. Like you, you read them like though clearly they want their answers. The CrossFit. Yeah. Based version. on a CrossFit methodology, and I was like, okay, well I have I have literally not o- cracked open the textbook. So I'm just going to wing this and get, and I, w- I think I did pretty well considering, um, cause I don't think they give you a grade. It's kind of like level three is a pass fail, but which by the way, we should throw out there. That's like their entry level and you're certified where with CrossFit, you go through your level one, right. you go through your level two, you don't get certified until now you've been through four days of practical and, and then 750 and, say, hours of, of and then you have to put some time in before you can even take the right. test yeah. i mean granted four years of, it's a four you have to have a bachelor's yeah but that doesn't again it doesn't have any there's no there's no for that test and not that it's not valuable like you said like there's a lot of content in there that's really cool the whole reason i brought that yeah. up is the criticism of crossfit's yeah. pipeline is not it's 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 silly yeah it based on the other credentials yeah. that it's are not out there. cscs is bad it's the people correct yeah yeah so you, you did that. You were in Lifetime. This is 18. Well, th- I was 18 and I was not in Lifetime. I did like ballets and 24-hour fitness ballies, and all kinds yeah. of crazy stuff. And then, um, and I had all the, th- I did all the things at the big box gym. Like I was nutrition. Did you step? Um, I'd never taught that. I taught psych, I taught cycle, yes. yoga, and um, boot camp. And then uh, did like nutrition coaching, metabolic testing, Kay. and metabolic specialist. Let me hit you with a hard question. Go for it. We're in cycle class. Yes. And you want to get the class like, this is fire, pumped up. What's the song you're going to play? Oh, it depends on the type of class. Is it a hill or is it? Let's go hill. I like, no, I like a big, I like a good climb. Jay had had a little Peloton phase. 
I, but no, I but I told Peloton spin. in my house. I mean, so. I got a, we got the tread. We got the Peloton. Roz is on it. And, you know, um, but back in the day, so I was making tapes. Yeah. At, at the very end of my spin career, MP3 players came out. Like, not a phone, MP3 players. There was that, like, techno guy, dun, 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 like, and I would play his stuff. What was his, uh, like, I'll think of his name, but... What would your song? Well, I played a lot of Dave Matthews. To layer into that, this gym's name, CrossFit Mafia, comes from a song that I played on a regular basis in my cycle classes, which is Three Six Mafia, Three, six Mafia. and mm-hmm. Tiesto. Yes. Yes. It's Three Six Mafia and Tiesto. It's That's where this name comes from. Yes. But you have like so, the um, the Godfather, Godfather yeah. vibe with the with the, the font. With Although the font. this is really cool, like yeah, a seventies yeah. like. I see seventies like TV show in show, this, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was hard not to look at the Godfather font. Like we took the Godfather logo and the font, and then like pulled the marionette guy yeah, out and yeah. put somebody right. on rings. Like that was a really simple change. So, that but that was that was that's your go-to song. That was that was one of my go-to songs. Can we request that, that for song? the noon? We yeah, can do it. I want to yep. hear. Yep. I want to hear like Brittany's pump up. Are you coaching the noon? I am. Sweet. Brittany's a great coach. You helped me remember that double back squat. Yeah, PR. PR City. The F is lowercase. In this, I didn't choose it. Who did that? I mean, I did, but mm, IP. We'll get IP on that. Well, we'll be, technically, you, we'll get rid of your affiliate real quick. I found this out today. Uh, somebody, I apologize because I don't save numbers in my phone. So somebody's texting. You me. are hey, the worst. Was, <laughs> he'll be like, "Who's happy this?" Happy you're saved. Yeah. Happy you're saved, Nate. I took a while to save yours. The uh, <laughs> who's this guy that keeps texting us about media? So speaking of just CrossFit and and font is where that came from. Yeah, so impact. Like, right. So yeah. they were like, "Hey, I don't know if you know this. It's, it's kind of uh, you know poetic, but they're like when you're looking when the pyramid that you made and the top is impact. He's like, I don't know if you know, but the CrossFit font." is impact and i don't know if you made that intentionally and i was like you're giving me a lot of credit here uh (laughs) no but it is however poetic so i was like i was like i didn't i didn't know that but that's kind of cool yeah and i don't know why i know that but i knew that and i think when they trademark it the f is capital yes yeah Yeah, but but it fits your shirt for the record yeah that's it would be weird to have a lowercase f in mafia and then a capital but i think that it's like yeah i think that that it's an appropriate departure yeah i don't know i'm not gonna get i'm a rule follower but i think that's most specific when you're using the trademark font and name in that form and this is your trademark fun name so let's flash forward a little what was the journey from 18 cscs to the doors open at mafia give us the uh uh, I my husband joined CrossFit Verve down in Denver um, cool. and started playing there with Matt, Matt Shree Shree, Chan. Yeah. Yep. Um, Lin- Courtney Shepard was also coaching there, and then he's like, "You got to come do this thing." I was really not against CrossFit um, because I was CSCS brainwashed, um, and then I had a bl- I had a blast, and they Courtney was my coach. She blew my mind and was really mean to me, which Courtney was Courtney Shepard shout out. Yep, yeah. Yep. And she is kind of mean. She's kind of mean. She's yeah. mean, but. But with Not love, really. with love. Yeah, yeah. she's yeah. one of the nicest people on the planet. Yeah, yeah. and she whooped my butt, and I immediately because I was a trainer, I was like, I need to figure out if this is a CrossFit Verve thing that's mm. happening here, or if this is a CrossFit. That's thing so smart that's of you. Here, that's like what we tell people. It's like so. I went that, to the level one like right away. That's fantastic because it's like it's like the people that are like that box gives that box a bad name. No, if you're intelligent like Brentney, you're like, is this unique to here? Or is this everywhere? And you did it in the opposite, which most people do. Like, that was fantastic is everybody. That's the people that say that doesn't happen are just narrow minded, in my opinion. By the way, can we talk about Courtney and her snorting? (laughs) Her laugh. She snorts. And she's, she told us at the summit, like, it's, it's going to happen. It can, she can't control it. No, that's what happens when people that snort laugh. It's just natural. Do you think there's a chromosome, like a (laughs) DNA thing? Like, you have the snort gene. (laughs) It's very rare. It's <laughs> <laughs> possible. Because oh. I want to avoid passing that gene on. Like, I Courtney, just, you uh, need to make sure contagious. that's recessive, <laughs> right? I hope it's not contagious. <laughs> yeah. Uh. So, But that's awesome that you did that. And then you, you you didn't go to another box. You were like, hey, let me go to the actual source, which is the level one. Yep, I went to the level one and had an amazing weekend and was really, like, enamored by the le- by the red shirt crew because I was a trainer. I was a professional and had worked really hard to, like, build up my credentials and was looking to be the tip of the spear for a trainer. Like, I was a strength and conditioning coach and all of that stuff. And so when I saw this red shirt team deliver all of the content of the level one, I was like, oh, man, I like I don't know any other job other than getting that one. Like, that's where I'm going next. You want to like immediately. Oh, yeah. Not, so you went from like, I don't like this thing. I joined the gym. You didn't even join maybe at this time. Or, I was not a member there. Right. 
I took this thing, and you were like, I'm going right to, I want to be a red shirt. Yeah, because that's just... I, I mean, I think we can say we had the same that's feeling. That's just my mindset has always been like, it continued my education and advanced my career, and if I'm, I'm not going to like, I don't want to be mediocre at something. Like, let's go. So Well, that's what kind of what we were talking about yesterday. That I don't remember BLM. what was in the car, but like... Well, on the, on the, they had that sign that said, you didn't wake up today to be mediocre. But just the, just the, the, oh, no, it was at breakfast this morning with Cody. We were just talking about the, like, some people just go immediately to that. They're like, hey, I'm not, I'm not in this for the end state. I'm in this for the journey. Mm-hmm. And those are the people that are typically more successful in, in, in achieving something that's pretty hard to do, whatever it might be. Well, we were, you know, also talking about or whatever. yesterday people that get distracted. And it's for what you're saying, Brittany was in it for that end state, knowing between here and there, there's a shit ton of work to be done. Yeah. And knowing Brittany, she's not afraid to do that. But some people just, if they don't get to there tomorrow, like, all right, what's next? I'm out. Well, I think it's just a, um, the, I would imagine that the reason you were probably successful in that endeavor is because you had already put in a lot of work to, to get to a certain point in your career as a trainer, just a different track, yeah. probably a similar amount of work. So you, you're, that process is not foreign to you. So you look at that, you know, it's like, you recognize what these people are doing and the immediate recon- recognition probably is like similar to what I saw and probably what you saw, which is like, that's legit. Mm-hmm. It's probably not easy to do, which is almost what makes it so enticing. Yeah. They're like, that's going to be difficult, but which is also, why I'm yeah. interested in it. But it was also like, I th- one of the distinguishing differences for me, which kind of layers into what we already talked about was that I had done all the studying, all the certifications, all the this. I knew all the things about the programming, de- program design and periodization and how to, how to do different types of programs for different types of populations and this, that, and the other. But never once had I ever been in a position where I was taught how to move better in an hour and then that, I, that mm. this trainer could do that with 20 people at one time. And it was like, it was the, it was the hands-on stuff that I was like, Holy cow, I'm terror I like literally walked away from Verve on one work after one work and I was like, I'm I'm a terrible trainer. Like I'm I'm really not good at this and I need to figure out how to be better like that. Like how do I make people better in the moment? Like all of the programming. That's the and, art. Oh yeah. All that's of what the, Todd was talking about yeah, at that summit hard. that we yeah. talked about. Like yeah. one of the you know, we had a regional gathering and Todd Whitman was saying, Let's get better now. As us as trainers but then also that's a reflection on the level one every weekend. Like how do we get someone or level two, how do we get them better right now with feedback like you were talking about? Well, this is also a concept I think, cause you both work level twos, but this is, this is tends to be a theme, which is, and if you're a trainer, you've taken your level two, it's probably happening to you or you're in the gym. One of the pieces of feedback that I'll really try to push people on is they'll watch somebody move. They'll call that rep. It'll happen. And they're like, Hey, next time. And I'm like, no, next time to do it. Do it right now. Like, leave them in the position. Fix it while it's happening. I want you to coach in the moment. If we do it afterwards, it's too late. That moment, that opportunity is gone. Well, they don't get to develop the kinesthetic awareness of actually fixing it from going from good to bad position. And you're going to get that opportunity again, but you lost that one. So don't bypass those. Just have the patience to just wait. Leave them in the static position, the bottom of the squat, the overhead position, whatever it might be, and like figure it out. And that's always like the awkward part. They're like, I don't know what to do. I'm like, try. I'm, I'm just going to let you, I'm going to let you kind of like tread water here for a minute. You will come up with something at yeah. which point now that we can unpack that and be like, they'll say something. And how do you think that worked? And like, not at all. I'm like, cool, let's do something try else. And, else. Na- and this is where you do the develop as a coach is that is like, let's get better now. I don't want to talk about it afterwards. Like, let's literally do it. Yeah. And I think that's the value of specifically the level two because um, Shane Angus, who's our kind of, he just took his level two. Oh, sweet. Yeah. You, were you there? No, but he just, uh, I, yeah. in that he, email, he, I asked him. Did he tell us that or was he going to it when we saw him? I think he was going to. Yeah, I think he was about to do he it. He just took yeah. it because I asked him, I was like, how's he training? He said he reached going? out he to see who was going to be there. He, I was like, how's training? He's like, oh, I just took my level two. And yeah. He's like, oh, he's like, I think I got a little better at moving. Shane and Angus is the, I think, director of operations for, for education. Yeah. I don't, the titles change. I don't remember. But that, like I think that, that's yeah. what he told us the other. Like, he's a big wig, great dude, big beard. But the cool part about CrossFit is everyone's doing the level ones and level twos now. And I doubt Shane coaches. No, no, I don't. I mean, yeah, I, don't. I think he's just doing it a to experience it because you're going to speak on it. But you know, and just to give the listeners something actionable, because as you were saying that, I was like, the overhead position is perfect. I'm out in the frontal plane here. 
cool, next time versus like, here's where I need you. Feel that? They're going to be able to get there. The next rep versus two or three reps later. Right. So it, It's just more efficient that way. We can we can actually get it fixed in that rep, at which point they'll go to it the next time instead mm-hmm. of me having to recorrect it a second time, which, probably not get there, and then have to do it a third time. By the way, for many of the things we preach, which does not happen here because you do cap, that doesn't happen in classes because there's just too much going on. We don't have the opportunity to coach. Sometimes. So we'll, we'll, let's get to cap in a moment. We still haven't gotten to mafia. <laughs> now, this is standard practice yeah, uh, for yeah, us. Yeah. Mostly Derail, me. Derail. Yeah. Fern likes to keep us on track. So I'm like, let's get off. Let's get off the rails as fast in, as possible. In your defense, you've been the one that's brought us back every time to the to the story. So there's that. Look into that camera. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yep, yep. After I did my level one, I started training my athletes with CrossFit, um, and then at, at Bally's and all those places. I was at Lifetime. Now you're at Lifetime. Yeah, it was. By the way, shout out to Lifetime. I love our cool Lifetime club. membership. Roz yeah. coaches there. You know, it's a cool club. Alpha. Which we, you know, Brian, you know, this is a watered down version of CrossFit, but yeah, yep. it's still good. And then I just needed a, cur- like I had been there, I'd, I had grand opened uh, three clubs in Colorado with Lifetime. I was a regional manager. Did you, like, were you at the Broomfield one? You're a regional that manager? The, mm-hmm. Did you drive a Ford Taurus? <laughs> no, Chrysler. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was um, a Chrysler. I did not. Broomfield was the only one that didn't open. They opened I after love it. I left. I give, like, I give them credit. Our clients know I take a lot of my calls there. Like, it's a great place and uh, I, lo- I do enjoy lifetime yeah and then I I just was it was I was just done with it I there was a lot of pressure at lifetime to um, sell um, that's why I had to be a jack of all trades is because I needed to like fill all these buckets um, because they never wanted anybody that was just going to be only a trainer it was like okay but you got to sell supplements and you need to do nutrition coaching and you need to get people on boot camp and all this stuff. It's and a so, different model. Yeah, it is a different model. And then I just was, I was burned out of that because I was always asking for more and more and more and more and more. And so I um, decided to jump ship and um, quit. And then we opened our CrossFit affiliate. Like I, I stopped in November and we opened the doors of our gym and had our first class the following March. Quick turnaround, four months. Yep. Which I mean... Standard practice to find a place, yep. paint it, yep. you know, get the equipment, etc. Yep. Was Nick your agent at the time? No. Nick's no. your neighbor here. It was so bad. Like, I wish that I could go back and do it again. Um, it, I thought that I was going to do, like, CrossFit plus everything else that I already did. Like, uh, I didn't know enough about CrossFit. I hadn't experienced enough CrossFit and didn't know how to run an affiliate and what that actual model of a business looked like. And so I was, in my head, I was like, well, I've got this book of personal training clients that are going to follow me to the death. So How many were that? Um, there was probably 10 people that were, as, that were my, my one-on-one They would do whatever like Brandy says to that, do. Like they're diehards, and yeah. a lot of them are still members here. Um, and then I was like, I'm going to teach yoga a couple days a week, and I'm going to do some CrossFit, and I'll but do all some personal training. But all mafia, under the CrossFit right. Mafia. Um, and I just was spread thin. We, ha- we signed a lease that was really expensive that we shouldn't have been in from the very beginning. Um, and... Yeah, I wish I could have gone backwards and but done it. I wish I could do it all over again because I would do it very, very I differently. I think you speak on behalf of many affiliate yeah. owners. Yeah, there's well, a lot to learn. Let's make that tangible. So one or two things, if you were to go back, if I had the magic wand, I'm like, go back. What is one of two things that you did that you're like, I would absolutely do that differently? Hey guys, Fern here. Real quick, I just want to share a quick success story from one of the hundreds of gyms that we've been able to help inside of Affiliate U. And our mission and best hour of their day is to ultimately improve and grow the greater CrossFit community by building better boxes and creating better businesses with better coaching staff so we can bring CrossFit to the masses. Check it out. And if you think we can help you, don't hesitate to reach out. My name is John Wells and I'm the owner of CrossFit Aries in Wilmington, Massachusetts. At the time when I was negotiating for purchase, the gym was not in a good spot. They were barely taking in enough revenue to cover basic expenses, barely even the rent. Membership base, there was a solid foundation, but there wasn't a lot. It was under 50 members at the time. And I knew kind of going into it, it was going to take a lot of work to get it up and running to where I wanted it to be. But I knew I had the passion and I knew I had the drive to get it to there. I just didn't know exactly where to start. The thing that stood out to me about Affiliate U was, you know, 
Fern and Ackerman. Uh, I'd listened to them on the podcast for years prior to actually signing the dotted line and purchasing my affiliate. And they were down to earth guys. They were in the CrossFit space. They were CrossFitters. They thought like me. They looked at the same things as me. And you know, it wasn't just some other program trying to build a business. It was like somebody in your community coming out and offering their hand for help. I wouldn't have signed a lease that, that I wouldn't have been in that building. I would have signed a different lease. It was also really hard, but I probably would have shot or signed a shorter term lease if I was going to be there. Um, I would have actually hired somebody to help me with my lease because we didn't have anybody to do that. <laughs> That's where I was going. The number like, of people that reached like, out to us, they're like, I signed a lease. I'm like, you did what? <laughs> I didn't have any. Can you get out of it? <laughs> did you ask anybody? They're like, it just seemed like a good deal. And I was like, holy. Ten years? Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. I didn't have a lawyer or anybody that helped me with that. It was bad. We should have done How that. How far was that from here? Um, it's on the other side of the highway, so it's about three miles from here. But, I mean, you've always been in this general yep. vicinity. So when you moved here, did most of the people come with you? Oh, yeah. Okay. What so was the other? Yeah, yeah that's ahead. one, right? So you're like, have, hey, I would have, have gotten some help in the leasing and, area. Yep, yep. And then what else? Um, I, I would have learned more about what the CrossFit business looks like from somebody with some serious experience. Um, it was really... It, it was really, really hard. And Courtney actually knows this, so if this is not going to be news to her if she listens to it. But the owners of Verve at the time was not Matt and Cherie Chan, and it was not Courtney. And they were, when they found out that we, I was opening an affiliate, they were livid. And so I... We're not really close to Verve, are we? No, we're far, far away. Yeah. It's like 45 minutes, isn't it? Um, It's 30 minutes. Okay. But still, um, like, still you're not, not still competing not with Verve. Not, not yeah. competing, but they took it as competing and were very upset with me. And so Jonathan and I felt, which is my husband, felt like we were really isolated and like, oh, now we don't... How are we going to make friends yeah, in this lost cross? Community. There was no connection so I wish if I could go back I probably would have waited a minute and tried to get some insight from somebody like Nicole Christensen or you that have owned an affiliate I didn't know you at the time but some you people like you that Me, have owned an affiliate for a long time <laughs> and and got some insight as to like what this actually should look like like how many members do I need per this like how many members do I need to get to what is my price per, I, how do I build those things like, I, I didn't do I, any of that well nothing. I feel like uh, I don't know, you are on a lot of calls and you're obviously on a lot of calls with us too, but I feel like the, the majority of advice and air quotes that I would give is probably is not like you should do this. Slow down. It's should probably do like less. you should do, you should not do that or you should do we, less. We had that conversation at ELM yesterday. One of the first calls, he was like, I want to expand. I was like, no, <laughs> let's not do that. And yesterday, what'd they say? Like that was the best advice we've <laughs> ever gotten. But I, I want to go back one step. There's two types of box owners, right? There's, the former owner, I don't know who he is, of, or she, of Verve, and there's a Nicole Christensen, right? And there's a reason Nicole is so successful, because we're probably closer to roots. It's about the same. It's Okay, yeah. call it the same. Yeah. But there's those that are, like, understanding, hey, if, if Brentney opens and I support her, A, like we talked about recently, like, that doesn't impact me. And if it does, it's probably only positive. We're in, like, a huge area. Like, we're yeah. near Denver. Yeah. Like other than maybe Manhattan and LA, like it's one of the biggest cities. Like there's, we need a hundred members. Yeah. We're good. Like yeah. don't, don't shit on other people's dreams, yeah. help them. And it's only going to come back to help you. Yeah, we, just, we just need more CrossFit people, right? Like that's we need more people doing that's, CrossFit. That's need I mean, yeah. yeah, we, we all got into this cause we, it's like, uh, like it's not a secret anymore. It's not your favorite band in the, you know, dive bar. Yeah. You want your mom, your grandma to do this. And that's how it happens. Yeah. Like, I mean, we've had three affiliates that have grown from Mafia. Have, have you really? Yeah, it's amazing. And I and I've done nothing other than support. Like, go spread your wings, op do, do your thing, um, open the gym, and I'm here to help you. And in fact, if you because it's like you said, like when you went to Verve for that first time, is everyone like this? And you want that? We want that to become the norm. Like yeah. all CrossFits are like this. That's the argument people are making. Like some are bad, some are good. Coach Glassman always says the cream rises. That will continue to happen. But if we can level up all CrossFits, yep. then we don't have to worry about these, you know, other other gyms doing fake CrossFit. I, well, that's the whole rub with the, just the, the gym down the street or I'm um, like, it, if my business is struggling, the only person that's at fault there is me right there. 
there are instances where there are outside variables that yeah, will come you in. You sign, like a really lease sign a shitty lease. Sign a shitty lease. But like even that, if you reversed it back, like that's a that's a your fault. That's a your fault thing. But there, like COVID would be an example. Like if a uh, if a landlord like just rips the lease out from out from under you because they sell the building, like that that kind of Things like happen. you can't do anything about yeah. that kind of stuff. Everything else is largely in your control. If you practice a little bit of self awareness, you ask questions. You exercise a little bit of humility, and you eat crow occasionally, and say, "That was a bad idea." Yeah. Like I should, I'm, I'm not going to continue down this path of this bad idea. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop the bleeding, and I'm gonna move in a different direction because this is clearly not working for any for any number of reasons. Either it was out of order, or it was just a bad idea. And that's a lot of people will ask, well, "Should I do this?" And so a lot of times, my answer will be, "Not now." I'm not saying no forever, but like currently, no, you should not do that. It, on the priority of things that you have going on, it doesn't make the top hundred. Yeah. It's like focus on the other ninety nine and you'll be fine. So I think that's I think that's most people in in most endeavors, if like if you if you think of like all the biggest errors in my have been like some variation of that story, which is like condense, do less, focus on the one thing. Um, and then it typically gets better. Yeah. So, so you, you sign this lease. How long were you there? Um, seven years. So you were there. You've only been here two years. Um, so technically, even, right? actually eight. Yeah. Um, yeah, eight and a half. Inch. And yeah. your neighbor Nick Folkdale, my realist. Folkadol. Folkadol. Is it Folkadol? Yeah, you guys are good friends. I mean, yeah, we're great friends. <laughs> <laughs> and Nick, we were, we're on Nick, a first name basis. Nick, <laughs> is a mem- Nick was a member of our gym at our other location. Actually, his wife was first. Nick was all poo poo CrossFit, and his wife Courtney got him to come. He's way better up. at CrossFit than he, he is. He, for yes, the she's very he squats a little high. Let's be honest. He, yeah, <laughs> we talk about it. It almost made me go with a different real estate agent. If I'm being honest, no. I was like, my real estate guy has to get below parallel, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> Has it helped him? Is that why he's now? Yes. Yeah. I think James on his rear end helps. <laughs> he and James partnered up in a team comp too. Yeah. yeah. Nick's, Nick's got it. He's yeah, good. He's fit. Um, yeah. They they were members of our other gym. And then when COVID exploded and happened, we were stuck. We knew that we needed to get out of our lease. So I don't, gosh, I don't know what year that was. COVID stuff was 2020, right? God, almost three years ago, almost, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. So we, our lease was ending in the midst of that. And I was like, okay, well, okay, so we don't have any gym. We don't have any members. We're not allowed to be open for business. And we have to, like, either, to reboot. either jump ship and, like, get all the way out or we need to find another thing. And there was a lot of conversations with Nick because he's a really great supporter of us um, as an affiliate and a member here. And he, yeah, he bought this building the does he own all the un- like these are like for, you can't tell but they're like big buildings with multiple units it's like most it. warehouse most, yeah, it's from, like most owns from that wall to the his side over so there. He, owns he owns the, the gym unit. space and, and then and his, his real estate, estate right. yeah his is much smaller yes his is just like the front like in front of that yeah oh, okay and then up it's above a nice there office. i peeked my head in there yeah, go yeah. it's cool did oh, he um, surgeon and stuff yeah oh, yeah did he um Build this out for you? Was it? Um, he did the floor and the turf. Yeah, that's cool. Yep. And it's and a beautiful the, and gem. And did the build out. Like, yeah. like and did jealous. like the fundamentals of the build yeah. out, like paint the walls and stuff like that. Build that wall, and then he did the, um, rolled the floor and the turf into the construction stuff. Yeah, I mean, we're we're filming some other content, and we purposely came here just because of the layout. It's bright. Like I actually forgot. I thought it had open ceilings. It's so bright in here. It's the it's the lighting. But yeah, this is a beautiful spot. And I did squat 350 for a double here. Right here. It was right. Yeah. Was in, did, <laughs> do you not use this area anymore? No, we do. Like, no, do you, we do. Is it like it's a Hall of Fame oh, area? It's, hall of fame. it's <laughs> rubbed <laughs> off. There's velvet rope it's around it. Like, yeah. Step in, into this area. Once upon a time, in 100 here, years, they're going to be like, yeah. <laughs> Stand like back. A, this like is a, for Ackerman. It's a brass plaque. Like <laughs> story of Jason. My Ackerman. bust is over there. Um, <laughs> oh no. So what? What were some of the immediate positive ramifications of relocating here to this building or to relocating from personal training to CrossFit? No, no. When, when you Being left here. your your spot about three miles away two years ago. Um, I really like my landlord. Who's He's Nick? Awesome. Who's Nick? Who's a Folk member of my Dale. Folk Adol. Folk Adol. Um, He's. It's a, it's just a blessing to have somebody. Uh, you, if your landlord is your one of your members, then they have buy-in. You, you literally, I saw you yelling at him earlier to not eat his eggs. Yeah, because he makes a mess. Yeah, like, and they smell. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like 
It, he, it's, this is his home away from home, it's just like it is mine, because his, his office is right next door, so that's great. But it's when you have a landlord that is a member of the gym, then there's immediate buy-in. They care about your success as, mm-hmm. a, as, an, as, a, as, a, as a business owner, like he cares about it, yeah, um, which is really, really helpful. It's also helpful when there's like a leak in the ceiling. I can just walk next door and be like, yo, fix the thing. Um, so which that's is probably nice. one of his cons he would say (laughs) well he knows how to connect to the people like he knows how to make the phone call well it helps that his career is real estate yes at the same time yeah kind of makes me wonder like thinking about this as you're talking through that just the gym owners and giving away free memberships and i'm like there's probably one person you should give a free membership to your landlord might be the landlord he's the one yeah like why wouldn't you i mean and and really i would charge them but my point is is like if you're going to give anybody a free one like have the landlord come into that facility and see what happens because like if they have to start kicking tenants out they're probably not going to kick you out yeah, once they like, like change their life yeah, right. or yeah. when there's a leak on top of you in class and you're yeah. like oh we should probably yep. fix you should that. charge the landlord listen yeah. to fern yeah. so you're enjoying it here again yeah i love it it's the the it's almost double the square footage of what our other place was so that's nice just more space um, this community is really cool because we're at a private airport, so that gives us the ability to kind of like run around and do what we want. We don't need to worry about a lot of traffic. We don't need to worry about like, I mean, there are planes, so that's a problem sometimes. But if, but if a plane hits you, something's going wrong. Yes. 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 It's <laughs> unlikely. <laughs> you went the wrong way. Yeah, it might hit Cody later. Have, Cody's, I'm have, worried about him. You have bigger problems. I'm worried about Cody running that today. Issue. But yeah, this whole, this community, this air park is full of just like small business owners, um, just like uh, like me. And um, it's a private airport, so there's not a lot of like gnarly rules. My dogs can be in here and they're safe around and kids can be here and we can run down the road 400 a mile or whatever. And it's like, it's safe. It's, there's no traffic. It's not. What are the business? I mean, like you don't have to name all of them, but like generally speaking, like what kinds of business? There's like- a flooring business. Um, there's a flooring business that's like wood flooring. There's a... Uh, uh, a ba- they build out like uh, camper vans. It's called Forty North. They oh, do custom cool. furniture, and he'll love that. He's actually his name is Kyle. Don't l- let's let him sponsor us because I want to get a <laughs> Sprinter van for the podcast, and then we can just drive around. <laughs> his name's Kyle. He goes to CrossFit Sanita, so he's a CrossFitter. Oh. He's been in here several times. He, he's wait, a good dude. His business is here, and he goes all the way to but Boulder. He lives in Boulder. Lives yeah. He lives in Boulder, and GC is a good dude. Yeah, and he. You uh, are. You think I want to spend time with you in a van? Yeah, just the two of us driving around the country. Oh, this is painful. Hey, wait enough. till people see the video Brit- we filmed. And, and, and wait till Brittany's people see the video the we filmed. The buffer. Here. Yeah, yeah, just the buffer. Yeah. Hey, I want to bring something up. Remember yesterday, we said how long till Cody implodes, and you said seven minutes. Yeah. Do you know that we talked about that in the past? On that's, the hit. That's why I said it. Oh, because I told Roz about it when I got home. I was like, Ferns in seven minutes. I was gonna, and she's like, Yeah, you talked about it with Hinshaw. I was like, I, and I told you I have no memory. I'm losing. My short-term memory is not great right not now. Not getting younger. Here's what, here's what he also, it's not his memory. He's just never paying attention. Okay. Fair point. <laughs> what was going on? What happened? <laughs> but I do want to tell you, I'm worried about Cody in this class. He won't, he goes out hot. And he's he young. knows he can't breathe. He's, he's young. also from Alabama. Yeah. It's, they're not the smartest. <laughs> <laughs> they're not, I know we have Alabama Be people, nice. but, but man, he's like, it's he, more of an altitude problem. Like it's gonna it be is, real but for he him. saw what happened Monday. Yeah. I'm like, okay, he's going to be smarter today. We did Mary yesterday. Oh, I know nice. you have those yeah. cap also. Yep. That's why I was texting you. Because yeah. they were like, we moved Mary around. I was like, well, we're not doing it again tomorrow. And he went out so hot. I was like, he has a, it's like a dog. I was like, you haven't learned your lesson? <laughs> and he just, it was exactly, Nate. We caught it on camera. Seven minutes. Where it. Altitude where he just, where it, imploded it just and hit him. Got really it was like he ran into a wall. That's what happens with altitude is people just, they go, they go, they go, and then all of a sudden there's no more oxygen. It's gone. And well, then all of a sudden that. you turn green. Don't go fast. Yes. Today he, it's, he's got to run outside. I'm like, he's going to, I just, you have the, I see you have an AD. Yeah, it'll be okay. I'm also significantly an, smarter. I'm, I'm an just EMT. injury prone fine. now in my old age. Yeah, yeah. For, Fern <laughs> pulled the hamstring. Cody's <laughs> dying. I'm the, somehow I become the fit one on this team. It's crazy. It's unfortunate. It's crazy. So let's, let's. We've got the mafia story. Yeah, hit me with your seminar staff story. I think that's always fun to hear how people like you. You took that level one, mm-hmm. and then you said, "I want to be on there." Now you're there. I am there, and you've been on the staff for nearly five years. Yep, um, I did. I started my internship in 2000 at the very beginning of 2018. I did my first internship with Cherie in San Antonio. Did my second internship um, in Portland with Chris McDonald. 
was awesome. I did my third internship in Atlanta with Chuck Carswell. Um, That's a no joke crew. Yeah. No, I pu- I deliberately put myself in a position where I knew that it was good that I was going to see different flow masters because I I knew that that might be valuable, and well, just um, meaning like those pe- are all like Cherie's doesn't mess around and people that don't mess around. Yeah, but you also you you're not going to name a flow master and you're like oh they mess around like. They're uh, all great. They're, they're all, all great, great, but there's there, everybody I mean, knows. Like there's there's even Fern is a, now you know a flow master. I guess we got to lump him in there. Oh. You know, I don't know how how would I be categorized? What do I not mess around? How does that work? No, you <laughs> you mess around. You're the unique one. You I'll throw Hobart in there. You and Hobart mess Ooh, around. Hobart James can handle hand some hard feedback out. Yeah, when I want to be like the you know you like you know. Fuck around, you find out. That guy. <laughs> yeah. The, yeah. Yeah. The, fuck the more you fuck around, out. the more you yeah. find out. Yeah. Yeah. That guy. So, what up? Was Chuck your third and final? Nope. Um, Chuck gave me some really difficult information or feedback. Um, not on my tech, not on what I was doing as a coach. He just didn't feel, he didn't feel like I w- wanted it. Um, That's just your demeanor. Yes. There's a little bit of that. I was also really sick that weekend, and I didn't tell him that until our little powwow at the end of the seminar. And he's like, I just don't feel it. I'm not feeling it from you. I don't think that you want it. I think you should spend three months to continue to practice and then try and, and come back for a fourth one and see if you are if you really want this. And that was really one of the best things that could have happened because I went from studying for my level three um, to practicing and getting ready for my internship and then three internships. All of that happened within five weeks. Six did weeks. you have your level like three boom, ahead boom, of time? Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. That's right. really fast. Yeah, I did all of it really fast. I'm surprised they even, they even like had that availability. Yeah, you must have like. Quick. Yeah. Okay. It's, you know, and and for the listeners. Took my level three yeah, and then yeah. went all the way through the stuff. That's crazy fast. I had a good connection that helped me yeah, like yeah. get the party started. But Getting hired on staff is obviously you have to have it, but outside of that, it's also like, I don't say luck of the draw, but what's needed, where it's needed, when it's needed, right? Because there's, there's like almost a permanent position available on .com these days of like, training staff but it depends also where you live let's be clear so you, they haven't ever needed more trainers in colorado right no. so but i'm <laughs> saying like the fact that they you know you did all those in a five-week stretch yeah. probably meant like okay we're, we we need some people here and you were just in I that go get a mentality just, yeah, i think i don't know if that was the case or if it was just like i just was on it i was like i want to go can i go here this weekend can it's i go here this weekend and and then i took three months off and i did my fourth with Todd Woodman in Boise. Oof. Yeah, like now we're talking yeah, like. Yep. Yeah. It was, it, he. Todd lo- made me cry just two weeks ago. <laughs> 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 he has made I think lots of people cry. I and they just did a, some special thing on him on the CrossFit training, like a a staff highlight with Todd, and I put in there that he told me on day two, immediately following the deadlifts breakout. He walked up to me and I was like sitting at the desk reviewing my notes and stuff. And he walked up to me and he's like, I'm recommending you for staff immediately. And then I just was like, it's in shock. urgent. We yeah. need her. It, yeah. And then <laughs> I just walked away and went to the bathroom and cried. Like, <laughs> <It is. laughs> yes. That's great. I mean, Todd well, giving you the thumbs up. Well, he's that, one of those people capacity. where like he's, he's, uh, he is like, he's when like, it's a yes, it's a yes now. It's a yes now, but it's also, it's like one of those people that he's very direct, obviously. Yes. And you have like, you just can't help but have respect for him because he just one of those people commands respect. But it's also when he tells you something good, it's almost confusing. You're like, wow. You're like, it's kind of like you, if I'm being honest. Because you're kind of like sometimes you, you say nice things, and I'm like, <laughs> like he gave me some. Pe- I was just like, I I can't tell if you're being serious right now, like because like I was waiting for you to say something bad. Yeah, because like, you crushed Where's it. Where's the sarcasm? Like, yeah. This so is like on camera, but I don't want to. I don't want to blow past something because I want to go back to Chuck. Yeah, that's exactly because this is a. It's like we were finishing each other's the sam- sandwiches. The, um, oh, you guys butt are so cute. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, you'll, you'll get it one day. B- b- because I think that is relevant to affiliate ownership, which is I, uh, I, effectively the feedback that Chuck gave you was, I don't get the sense that you care, yeah. which is way different than you're not good at this and yeah. probably hurts way more. Yeah. Especially when you do care. Yeah. When, you, when yeah. you've worked your tail off for over you, a year to get Kristen it done. Kristen <laughs> Bowen has given me feedback like that. Sarah Wilkin has given me feedback like Let that. Let me say something. The common denominator. Do you know what I'm about to say? That me and Fern both have resting bitch face. That's exactly <laughs> right. That's okay. exactly okay. right. Because look at the opposite. I've only, I've been told I'm a shitty coach. <laughs> <laughs> but it's always you have great presence and attitude, right? Because yeah, so you're so smiling. Yeah, so it's never, the, the RBF is really bad for you guys in that role. Like, and I'm being serious it's, for a moment. Like no, no, you have to work it's through detrimental. something, it's right? Real. It's detrimental. It's real. With with yeah. with um, and it just goes to show you both have done that, 
and you clearly the other things you have well because that's a tough thing to break through for well, a lot of people. Like, but, but the whole you look like you're angry. Are you angry? I'm sorry. <laughs> I. <laughs> but the whole purpose of that, I think, is is from a leadership standpoint, and this is something that Todd Whitman uh, kind of gave me feedback, or not necessarily feedback, just guidance on give the feedback. And this is what we talked to gym owners about. It's just like, well, I've got a problem. Like, did you talk to them? And they're like, no. And I'm like, this is the, this is ultimately the crux of the problem is like, you're not addressing the problem because it's uncomfortable. And you ha- if you can get past that, this is going to be uncomfortable and you can just give the feedback, things like this now become the, the, the outcome, which is like, Hey, I'm going to give you something. It's a piece of feedback. That's hard. That's really going to be uncomfortable for you. And then from there, I think what you find more often is like when you really are honest about that, people react positively to it in most instances. Once they get past their feelings and they're like, they're probably telling me because they give a shit about me. Mm -hmm. Let me try to fix that. And I think that is something that is really overlooked that we get exposed to a lot, but it, it should be continued to be revisited, which is as a box owner, as a leader in whatever your tribe or your community is like, that is a skill set that you have to hone and that takes reps like because it's uncomfortable for everybody like if you're about to give somebody some feedback that's uncomfortable like make no mistake it is uncomfortable for you as the person giving feedback particularly if you care because all you're telling yourself is, i'm about to hurt this person's feelings yeah not intentionally but it's because it's what they need to hear in order to grow yeah that's what it, it's on the it's not even not intentionally it's like i'm gonna hurt this person's feelings but they're gonna be better because of it going back to what you're talking about how what was your uh, what happened inside your body when Chuck said that to you? I was devastated because I had worked really, really hard. But this inside my body at the time, I was, I was heartbroken. Um, I thought that, and I told him, I was like, I've been, I've been battling a cold this whole weekend and jacked up on drugs to try to stay present. He was like, oh, cool. He's like, I appreciate you not, not using that as an excuse and telling me. And then, um, from there, what was really cool is that I came home and I had three months to like continue to practice and then also to think on it a little bit. And one of my close friends, I told her what had happened and she looked at me and she's like, would you want it if it was easy? And I was like, no, I mm-hmm. wouldn't. I want this job because it's the tip of the spear because they're great. They're exceptional. Um, and I want to, and I want to have earned it. And then I knew that that's what I, that I needed to come to my next one with, not with necessarily more skills and tools because they didn't, all of those, um, my interns, they said that I had, that was not a problem. It was the, it was the presence and attitude. It was the showing that I care. It was the smiling more. It was the energy, um, being a bigger version of myself stuff. And, and I knew that I needed to just like have fun and send it. And, and I did, and it was great. It was, I needed to hear that from him. Um, I needed, cause I needed time to reflect and to, and to grow and decide if I did want to do it or not. Cause I had like, like I had just told you guys from taking my level three to my internships, it was like a whirlwind of stress and travel. So it was good. Yeah. And I think, you know, it proved to work for you because it's unusual for the flow to tell you after deadlifts, we want you. Yeah. Like, he you did tell me that my implementation of feedback was one of the things that he was most excited about. Not feedback from the other flow masters, but from, well, from day him. one to sure. day two. Right. That he was like, I asked you to do that, and you did that, and you did it. So, like, I'm right. Let's go. Yeah. Let me put that out there to the listeners. Like, for many listeners, you know, not all, I'm not tooting our own horn, but for many of them, their goal is to one day be on seminar staff. And you're hearing the journeys of it and how prestigious it is and how, how much you learn. One of the common denominators across it is willingness to accept feedback. So th- whether you're taking your level two or you're talking to us. More specifically, implement. There's a difference between take, accepting right, yeah, implement. It, like you it, did it. Right, not yes. just smile and nod and not do it, but actually now do it kind of like you talked about. Hey, next rep, I want to see this. So when you're at your level two, if your goal is to become a red shirt one day, let's see you do that. Or if you're an affiliate, you and I'm giving you feedback or you are in the professional professional development. Let's go with that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, accept Pro Dev, you can't get it wrong if you do it that. Yeah. <laughs> accept it and, and implement it immediately. And that's a that's a life lesson. I'm sure you do it with Jess, with John, with Roz. Like we get feedback and there are plenty of times, especially your significant other, I'm like, I will end you. 
right? <laughs> <laughs> Ross, if you ever say that, you ever so say like, that again, I so get it, honey. That's how you want the dishwasher you, to be loaded. Who awesome. are you talking to? Because you're clearly not talking to me. <laughs> yeah. But I, I would, uh, that, but that's clear. You, you're the same way as a box owner, right? So like we've had conversations and I've given you feedback or ideas on, on the same thing, which is like, hey, I, this is how we do it. And I'm like, well, we might want to consider other ways to do yep. that. And it's, that might even be harder because this is your baby. And, and then like having to take that feedback and be like, oh, I need to change something here. Well, it's harder because it sometimes that feedback requires a lot of more steps and work and, and reversing things that you've been doing for a long mm-hmm. time. And it's not as simple as like, I don't know, try to teach the squat in this right. fashion. Um, it's more like, no, you need to overhaul your entire onboarding and then restructure your pricing. Oh, that's great. That won't be an easy step <laughs> to do, uh, well, but it, it also needs a to lot be of done. And it's also not not been working yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. the whole time. Like, yeah. You've it's had not working, success. So let's go some let's do oh, something else. I was saying you had success yeah, yeah. and you're like, but you want me to change it anyway? Yeah. But that's you being willing to say maybe there's a better way. Yeah. And then also understanding that, that there's an evolution to that. Right? Like it it, it doesn't end. Like it, it it's not how it works. Like this is just the next evolution of it. And then there will be one past that, and there will be another one past that. And the second that you stop evolving that or stop looking at it critically is when you will start to have regression. You know, like I was talking to Cassidy the other day and I was like, here's the things I want to change all the way up to the point where like, I want to change the greeting for the onboarding. He's like the greeting. And I'm like, I just want to change it like to that granular level. And he's like, okay. And I'm like, that's fine. But I'm like, these small things will start to add up. And it's like, it's pretty good. I want to make it great. And then I want to make it blow people's minds. Yeah. And it will be those small changes that you make. And it's just like, and you'll get pushback. You're like, why, why is that important? I'm like, here's why I think it's important and here's the purpose behind it and all that kind of stuff. And all of that can be difficult. Like, Hey, we're going to change like how we reach out to people when they, when they contact the box or we're going to re or like we talked about changing the kids program. Mm-hmm. We're like, Hey, well, this is how we do it. I'm like, we should think about changing the format of a kid's program. Yep. And it's hard to take it first, but then you're like, you came to that one pretty quick. You're like, it's not working. So yeah. we gotta do something else. Yeah. This, <laughs> this is a better format. Like yeah. let's, let's yeah. shop it into like smaller blocks instead of just running it like a, an evergreen program. Yeah. Because, and in a lot of instances, like changes like that or the onboarding, there's multiple factors, at least that I take into account when, when talking to a gym owner about that. But a lot of them involve creating efficiency to free up bandwidth. Yeah. Because most of what's happening in those scenarios is like there's just too many irons in the fire. And it's just like there's no, there's no opportunity for objective assessment of what it is that you're doing because you never actually have the time to just look at it. But if you can make it more efficient, be like, hey, let's change this and free up a little bit more bandwidth. And there's a two-week block here where we can focus on other things and then reprioritize what we're doing. And I think that is what most people overlook. And I don't think it's uh, bad or intentional. I think we all just throw ourselves into the deep end. And you're like, look, I'm doing it. And I'm like, drowning? I'm like, I, you're like, but I'm swimming. And I'm like, it looks like you're drowning, yeah. you know? <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, and I think and I think that that's the, that's the whole crux of just like having either yourself or somebody else kind of come in and just pull you back to the shallow and be like, hey, let's just tread water over here for a little bit, reassess and be like, could we get more efficient with some of these things? And when we, it's ready to go back to the deep end, like I'm not opposed to the deep end, like let's go, let's just be prepared for that. Yeah, and you're not, you might not, as an affiliate owner, you might not be drowning in all areas. I think that we've, right. we've been like really kicking butt for a long time in the coaching department here um, and the service that we do it deliver, our class structure, all of that stuff. But there's areas where we've been drowning and we needed it and like, and that's okay. You have to be able to go. How do you get better at all of it is to just look at one piece of the pie at a time, um, whether that be the kids program or your onboarding or uh, how you staff, how you pay your staff, like all of that stuff plays a role. And it's, it's not just as simple as delivering like the best hour of the day in order, to, in order to do continue to do that, which is the things that I've had to talk to my staff about in order to continue to deliver great service and grow this, then we got to move the needle from a financial standpoint mm-hmm. more in order to continue to grow. Otherwise we won't be able to continue to provide this service to our community. Um, and I'll just get run ragged and quit. So, And I think the, <laughs> the takeaway there is that, you know, like you guys, obviously you, whether, cause James coaches here too, yep. right? Yeah. So there's two red shirts in the building, right? Or do you have another one? Anyway? Nope. Okay. So there's two at least, right? So that, that aids tremendously just having you guys in the building, just in the presence of the other coaches, they will pick up things by watching you do that. And this is where I feel like f- people like you and other people on seminar staff that we've worked with, uh, I will just tell them, like, you can ignore the coaching for right now. I have full confidence that what is happening there is 
No one's really, dying. Really good. Not only no. not a. It's no, like it's going well. It's, oh, with, it's, when the seminar staff it's led, really yeah. well. Like you could literally not touch that portion of the business for a long time, and it would be just fine, yeah. right? Let's focus our efforts somewhere else, and that's probably how you should. I want to create like something in the business that's really strong that can carry the business, so that I don't have to worry about it, and I don't have to always be checking on. I'm like, no, no, what's happening over there is top notch. I'm not worried about it. Let's dial in something else, and I think. That's a lot of what we talk about. We talk a lot about sales, a lot about structure, a lot about systems, which is where most people struggle because that's not our forte. Yeah. You're like, I like to train people. And you're like, I'm not a systems guy. And I'm yeah. like, well, then we have to have somebody else build them or we have to find some way to implement them. But you can't go without putting them in because if you like to train people, well, then we want you to be able to do that. And in order to be able to do that stress-free, then we have to build up other portions of the business. And like, other, a lot of people struggle with marketing. Like we've talked a lot about that. And it's just like... Where, what, what things could we take from your previous experience that you kind of left because of, but we don't have to throw the baby out with the bathwater. What yeah. could we use there that yeah. we know and say, okay, why well, I need to put like my sales hat back on. Yeah. It's like, because that's what drives the business and it's not you, what you want to do, but it's required. Yeah. So see that guy right there. He's standing there. Cause he's telling us it's, it's time it's to wrap it up. Time. We got to hit that he noon class. He didn't give the, the uh, safe word, the peanut butter jelly sandwich. You gotta give it that mustache says all we need to know. <laughs> and that is, it's been a great time chatting with you. Thank you. We're going to see you in action right now. Well, they're not going to see you, but we're going to see you. You get to do it. And this is fantastic. We're excited to be a continued part of the Cross and Mafia journey. As an affiliate owner, almost 10 years. Mm. Seminar I tried, staff. Cody. Yeah. I tried. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> Any, any kind of guidance or uh, advice you'd give to affiliate owners or coaches, but just to kind of wrap it up, who are like, want to open affiliate, want to make it make their way up the chain in the, in the CrossFit ecosystem? I think the most important thing is to find a trustworthy mentor to, that has experience in this thing um, and can help you one step at a time walk through the process from... Like, well, who do you, who is the person that helps you with your lease? Who, how do you know what your pricing should look like? All of the stuff, all of the, what equipment is necessary and what's not. Um, like all of those little things that you think about, cause it's fun to start all of that, but you also need somebody to like hold you back and pump the brakes and, and, and tell you like that you got, can't put the cart in front of the horse. You got it. There's things that you got to make sure are sure up before you go in a, a mentor that has experience and it is. I think mission critical. I wish I would have had one. That is because I, did, I didn't when I started. Fern, get this. Affiliate, Affiliate University. University. <laughs> <laughs> See you guys next time. <laughs>